Testing one, two, one, two. Hey, hey. One, two. Mic check, one, two.
Check, check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. One, two. Mic check, one, two. Thank you. 
Check, check.
congregation may be seated for a moment. It is with great joy and honor that we take this opportunity to welcome especially each and every one of you to the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony of our dear son Austin and our dear daughter Alina. About a year ago when I was assigned as the assistant priest of this parish of St. Mary's Valley in Dallas, I had seen Austin and he had approached me and he said, Austin, he said, Achen, we are planning to have our wedding celebrated next year. And I asked him, what is the date? And he said, May 28th. And I said, you know that that is the feast of Pentecost. And he started laughing and he said, yes, Achen, sorry, I didn't know before we had planned. But I would say we are all here after celebrating this feast because it is a blessed day where the Spirit has come and the Spirit has rejuvenated and filled the church with blessings from above. And that same Spirit is the Spirit that is going to unite you today as husband and wife, which is a mystery that we cannot explain. On behalf of all the clergy that are here, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome, especially the chief celebrant, Reverend Father Jerry John Jacob, who is the vigar of St. Mary's Orthodox Church in Detroit, and who is also the parish priest of the bride, Alina, and has been a close family friend to the family. On behalf of all the clergy, we welcome Achen, and we also welcome all of the Reverend Fathers who are gathered here from near and far, from the local area in Dallas, as well as from New Jersey and from many different places. With one accord, I welcome all of our beloved priests, as well as our beloved deacons and seminarians who have gathered here for this blessed occasion, along with the wedding choir. As we have gathered here, we know that this service has two main parts, the blessing of the rings, followed by the blessing of the crowns. As we always mention, for those who might be attending this wedding ceremony of the Orthodox Church for the first time, I don't mean to disappoint you if you have come to see the bride and the groom exchange rings, but rather you will see the priest of God place the rings after it has been blessed by God through the church, and that ring will then be placed on the right finger of each of the bride and the groom, representing Christ, especially through the church, through the priest of God. In the second service, we will have the blessing of the crowns, in the ancient custom back in the early church, actual crowns were used. Instead, today we will have gold chains placed with a symbol of the cross that is coming from above and is blessing and is coming forward, especially upon the heads of this bridegroom and this bride, as they are crowned as a king and queen. In a sense, you are a new miniature church that is being established and we are here witnessing that great union that is happening. Immediately after the blessing of the crowns, we will have the tying of the minna, as well as the placing of the bridal sari, which is the mandragori, which is an ancient Indian custom that has been passed through generations and has been adopted and accepted by the church and is a seal of this marriage and also the commitment which the bridegroom takes as he has given this bride representing the relationship between Christ and His Holy Church. At the end of the ceremony, the priest will then join the hands of the couple, declaring them as husband and wife, and then thereafter we conclude the service of holy matrimony. At this time, I want to just give everyone a friendly reminder that this is a worship service that is participatory. It is not one where you are here as bystanders just to watch or to see but rather we encourage you to participate. And books have been provided, which follows all of the service in order in both Malayalam and English. And I hope that this will be an enriching experience as we celebrated this blessed feast day of Pentecost and as we are here to witness and participate in the holy matrimony of Austin and Alina. And as a final reminder, please take a moment to silence or turn off your cell phones so that there are not any disturbances during the wedding ceremony. 
Also, may I lend the altar for Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who has come and is to come in the name of the Lord. Glory be to him in the highest. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, Almighty. Holy art thou, Immortal. Crucified for us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, Almighty. Holy art thou, Immortal. Crucified for us, have mercy on us. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, Almighty. Holy art thou, Immortal. Crucified for us, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, be kind and have mercy. Lord, accept our service and our prayers. Have mercy on us. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to thee, O Creator. Glory be to thee, O Christ the King, who has compassion on his sinful servants, God at all. O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts and sins, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, our Lord Jesus Christ. O Virgin Saint Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at all times, and in the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May His mercy and compassion be upon us, weak and sinful, in both worlds forever and ever. Amen. Is worthy of your imperishable joy, for you are the source of our joy and the fulfillment of our gladness. May our souls and the spirits accept in you, and by your compassion, abolish our distress. By your mercy, increase our virtues, shower your blessings upon us, and enrich our minds. Perfect our bridegroom, and make our bride glorious, so that along with all your saints, who have forever placed you, we may rejoice with you in everlasting bliss, together with the congregation of your saints and the company of your beloved. We will offer glory and praise to you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Mark more, have mercy on me, O God, your loving kindness. In the bonds of your mercy, blot out my sin. But wash, more, me, wash me thoroughly from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my fault and my sins are before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. That you may be justified in your words and vindicate in your judgment. For I was born in guilt, and in sin did my mother conceive me. But you take pleasure in truth, and you have made known to me the secrets of your wisdom. Sprinkle me with your hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Give me the comfort of your joy and gladness, and the bones which have been humbled shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my faults. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew your steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Oh, restore to me your joy and your salvation and let your glorious spirit sustain me that I may teach the wicked your way, and sinners may return to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue shall praise your justice. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall sing your praise. For you do not take pleasure in sacrifices, by burnt offerings you're not appeased. The sacrifice of God is a humble spirit, a heart that's contrite, God will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion, and build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be satisfied with sacrifices of truth, and with whole burnt offerings. And they shall offer bullocks upon your altar, 
and to you belongs praise, O God, but a Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, unto the ages of ages and forevermore. Grant peace between them that they may love and accept each other with the gladness all the days of their lives forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Victorious blood, 
you have filled her with joy and gloriously illumined her with your brilliant light you have divinely granted that she may dwell with you you have kept her in perfect order through your holy apostles O true bridegroom you are the one who established that the joy of men and women be perfected by the ring by these rings may this betrothal attain perfect joy at this time O lord god bless these rings that we your weak and sinful servants blessed with joy we beseech you o lord to bless these rings which we are for profane and consecrate them by your grace o god bless these rings with your divine blessings as you have blessed the ring of your holy church o lord god perfect this bride groom our son and this bride our daughter and fill them with wisdom by your compassion keep away from their marriage all kinds of faults and defilements o god gladden them and see singly in this world and in the world which is to come through this earthly and temporal wedding feast adorn this couple in manifold ways all the days of their lives graciously guide them to your eternal heavenly feast where the watchers and angels rejoice and see singly by your love o lord free this congregation which is present before you from all sin and offenses from all blemishes and faults that they may they be blessed by you and that they may bless you may they stand before you and unceasingly glorify you and your father and your holy spirit now and always forever and ever hosho vavagulasma anlaval me ami manalo hon ga bel ko soyo dikhao be shubh kon da to hai trai ko nal mal o lam bol me ami
and who have made you the mediator of their marriage through us, who are weak and sinful, worthy with the sweet fragrance of virtue, that we, that we may raise up from them and may peace and concord, true love and perfect unity reign among them, strengthen them that they may preserve their purity for each other, both in soul and body, and grant that they may offer up glory and praise to you and to your Father and to your living Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, who blesses these rings by His grace and abundant mercy forever and ever. Amen. For the fulfillment of the joy of the children of the Holy Church, these rings are blessed. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Jesus Christ, be stretched out to our in your mercy. Through this ring of your betrothal, receive the grace and blessing of his loving kindness. May his right hand, full of goodness and blessing, be with you all, protecting all the days of our life. Amen. But I can only the right hand of our Lord Jesus Christ. Full of blessings may mystically stretch out to you. Receive the ring of your betrothal from the hands of the Holy Priest, as though you receive it from the hands of holy apostles, with the healing of your soul and body. And from a joyful heart may you offer praise to him, and his Father and his Holy Spirit, now and always for a Perfected the love of his church through Christ. Perfect in truth and justice, these are children who are now betrothed to each other. Through these rings which you have received. Sabhayam tiru sabhayam inya Atyunnada nude maana vaati
witness this betrothal which has been made righteous by God may he reward your efforts 30 60 and 100 fold may he reward you always with good things may the cross of our Lord be with you by night and by day and protect you from the evil one and his host forever and ever Amen. Amen. the congregation may now be seated here ends the service of the blessing of the rings at this time I invite Reverend Father Joel Matthew service today you we read we pray that is the Holy Spirit that comes and blesses these sacraments so it's the Holy Spirit that joins you two together so it's a joy for all of us to be asked to be invited here for this beautiful wedding for this whole recognize and congratulate the parents for doing such a fine job with these two young children I've had the pleasure of knowing both of them for many years I met Alina ten years ago at a leadership camp, MGU System Leadership, I'm laughing because the encounter was so epic, I didn't remember any of it. She had to remind me last week that we met 10 years ago. But Alina was very involved in MGU System, that's how I met her for the first time, and then later when I found out that she had a friend named Austin, then we got closer. But I've known Austin for many years. As Achen mentioned, we served in the same parish, we grew up in the same parish. Austin is a wonderful person. He served in different capacities of the diocese. We both served on the MGO System Council together for many years, and he currently serves on the LRD committee with me. So these books that we're using today, Austin has a, a hand in putting these things together. Those are all the good things about Austin. Austin has many wonderful characteristics, wonderful qualities. I think that Austin likes nice things in life. As I look around, my goodness, look at this church. Austin likes nice things in life. He's always had nice hair. I've always noticed that. And I've always been impressed how his hair always looks so perfect. Oh, you know, you look beautiful too. But Austin likes nice things. Before I really knew who he was, I just knew him as the kid who had the really nice car. And as we've come here today to this wedding, many of you may not know, I didn't alluded to it in the beginning, but we have to be very careful and make sure that we keep this church very nice and clean. Many years ago, we had many weddings here. And whatever happened, we weren't allowed to have weddings here for, many, for a long time. But Austin was determined that he wanted his wedding in this church. And so while we were meeting with our, our premarital counseling sessions, I kept asking him, where's the wedding? Where's the wedding? And that would begin the first 20 minutes of every session of, oh, we almost got it, no, we didn't get it. We almost got it, we didn't get it. Many of you may not know, he had to jump through hoops to get this church on this beautiful Sunday. Austin's very persistent, and that's a great quality to have in marriage. I think many times we forget, those of us who are married, that we have to look at our marriage like investments. We have to invest in our marriage. We have to work at our marriage. We have to be committed. We have to be determined. We have to be persistent. And persistence takes work, takes effort, takes follow-up. I think when we were kids and we grew up, especially in this country, many of the stories that we read were all these fairy tales. And there's this guy and this girl and they finally meet, whatever the story may be. And at the very end it says, and they lived happily ever after. And that's a great fairy tale for us to grab hope on when we're kids. This idea of happily ever after. But for any of us who are married more than one day, we know that happily ever after isn't something that just comes easily. It's something that comes with tremendous work, with great effort. Today I'd like for us to reflect upon St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. It's a story that's probably familiar to all of us. It's the story of the parable of the talents. And it talks about investments. It talks about there are three servants who were given different talents in their life. The first, the first servant was given, who knows? The first servant was given five talents. The second was given 
two talents. And the last servant was given one talent. And so the master goes away for a long time, and then he comes back and he says, what did you do with the talent that I gave you? So Lord, one day will ask, Austin, what did you do with this beautiful, talented individual I gave you? And the Lord will ask you, Alina, what did you do with this very handsome, nice-haired gentleman next to you? When you read the story in the Gospels, the one who had five talents made five more. The one who had two talents made two more. But the one who had one talent, he took that talent and he buried it in the ground. He buried in the ground because he thought, you know, when the master comes back, I'm just going to give him what's his. And the master came back and was mad and said, why did you not at least try? Why did you not at least try? We all know those of us who are married, sometimes there are days that we feel like we're failing. There are some days that we feel like we're just swimming in the red. But with God's grace, we can come up from it. And that talent that the Lord gives us can multiply, can bring dividends if we are persistent. So the effort that it took to have this wonderful wedding, the effort that it took to come together, if that effort is applied into our marriages, not just for Austin and Alina, but for all of us, we could have truly wonderful experiences in our life. You know, there's a beautiful story in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 29, where this man named Jacob sees this girl from the distance. And he sees how beautiful she is. And he says, I want to marry that girl. If you go home, and that's your homework assignment today, Genesis 29, you go read how Jacob had to work hard to get the hand of Rachel. And he had a crazy life, Old Testament times. He had a very challenging life, a very difficult life. His father-in-law did some weird things. But Jacob was persistent that he wanted to marry Rachel. That he was insistent that the woman that he loved would be his. St. John Chrysostom says in his homilies of marriage, the greatest relationships a human can have is that of a husband and wife. And when your relationship succeeds, our community succeeds, our world succeeds. Today at the end of the service, of this beautiful service, the priest will take your hands and you'll join them together. And even though you have this wonderful congregation who has gathered here, many times people don't even show up to the weddings anymore. This church is packed. You have lots of friends and family. When this wedding's over, we'll all go back to our homes. And it'll be just the both of you. We're all praying for you, these wonderful people sitting in the first couple of pews. Your family will be praying for you. But it's your responsibility as you hold each other's hand to walk hand in hand to the kingdom through the good times and the struggles, the difficulties and the joys of life, that your life in this world may bring glory and honor to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever. Amen. We will now begin the second service, which is the blessing of the crowns. The congregation may now stand. Page number 35, page 35. Barikimor, glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May his mercy and compassion be upon us, weak and sinful, in both worlds forever. Amen. He is worthy, O Lord God, of that eternal wedding feast and everlasting bridal chamber, together with the guests whom you have invited your wedding feast, Invite us also, O Lord, to your everlasting joy, so that with them we may offer glory and thanksgiving to you, and your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Adimani di Thank you. 
கையோடி சகாக்கினை வாழ்த்திய தெய்வம் தன்பு கிருபையா கோவினை வாழ்த்திய தெய்வம் தந்தகு to each other with the wealth of your spiritual gifts make them rejoice with your favor fill them with the joy of your divine commandments so that they may sing praise to you with gladness and exult in you O Father, Son and Holy Spirit now and always forever and ever Amen Amen வரம் நாதாலே லூயா நிஷத்திலும் ரிக்ஷிலும் திருபதி self-existent one who existed exists and will exist forever to the eternal word whom the angels above his throne worship to the great and exalted one who had pity on us because of his abundant mercy to the one who turned our fallen human race back to him and who by his love made our nature which had alienated itself from him worthy of drawing near to him to the one whom both philosophers and the skeptics have no choice but to worship for even they are unable to question or examine his being to the one who plates crowns for the princes to the one when he loses everything remains loosed and when he binds everything remains bound to the majestic one who confers crowns of joy to the bridegroom and the bride To him belongs glory and honor at this time of the blessing of the crowns of his servants and at all times seasons and hours and all the days of our life 
Bukul hun yomo sud hain level me. O Lord God, whom all the heavenly hosts glorify with fear and trembling, whose greatness terrifies the fiery cohorts and makes them shudder in the heights above, but who by his abundant and ineffable compassion and infinite mercies rejoice when we who are poor offer our praises. Who is pleased when we who are weak and earthly offer our service? O oh Lord, you are long-suffering, and you desire is that we approach you with our needs. For you are quick to bestow gifts and slow to punish those who deserve chastisement. O oh Lord God, bless your servants who travel everywhere and dwell under the authority of your greatness. Especially these, your servants, who stand present before you and take refuge in the shadow of your loving kindness and under the wings of your compassion. Restore, save, and gladden your servants that they may be virtuous in all their actions. Keep them, direct them in the path of your law that they may walk in your truth. Grant that they may follow the straight and narrow path which leads to the kingdom of heaven. Grant that they may attain spiritual gifts and be diligent and earnest in their divine pursuit, which is profitable for both their bodies and their souls. O oh Lord God, grant that they may love eternal life and be distant from those who have fallen into the death of sin. Unite their hearts that they may draw near to your holiness and flee from the slavery of the accursed Satan. Make us and them righteous laborers in your spiritual vineyard, who are diligent in piety and zealous in observing your commandments. O oh Lord God, make us imitators of your saints. Make us love one another and hate the evil one. Make us obey your divine, your divinity, and bless our enemies. O oh Lord, make us worshipers of your majesty and ministers of your lordship. Grant rest, O Lord, to our faithful departed, that they may rejoice in your heavenly kingdom, for you are good and the lover of humankind. And we will offer up glory and praise to you and to your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and always and forever. Amen. But more from God, may we receive the remission of debts and the forgiveness of sins in both worlds forever and ever. Sundarigalil adi sundari ni jadigalin sonu Dhrubadi shalomon vimala sabhe ninne lali Inna dharangal madhu varshikyunnu Vasana sugandham nisaan kusumasamam Sabaye sagala vidham sumukhi Nikarati dato Sri Vai Vanni Padina Raja Vama Shiha Aleluya Kakum no Ninne
but that it should be holy and without blemish. So should men love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own body, but nourishes it and cherishes it, even as Christ does for his church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and his church. Nevertheless, let every one of you so love his wife as himself, and the wife see that she respects her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is the first commandment with the promise. Honor your father and mother that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth, but at more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy with your spirit, Holy Ghost. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the life-giving proclamation from St. Matthew the Apostle, who proclaims the good news of life and salvation to the world. Blessed is he who has come and is to come. Glory be to him who sent him for our salvation, and his mercy be upon us all forever. And our God and our Savior Jesus Christ, the Word of Life, God was incarnate of the Holy Virgin Mary. These things did come to pass in this manner. We believe and confess. And when Jesus had spoken these words, he went away from Galilee and came to the border of Judea beyond Jordan, and large crowds followed him. And he healed them there. And the Pharisees came up to him and were attempting him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? But he answered, saying to them, Have you not read that he who made from the beginning made them female and male? And he said, Because of this, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and two shall be one flesh. Henceforth they are no two, but one body. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He then said to them, for your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I said to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for adultery, and marries another commits adultery, and a man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And the disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all are worthy of this word, but only those whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who, ha who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have been made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive this, let him receive this at the of the Lord. Barakmo, peace be unto you all. Vanya Sri Mataru Inne, Nidhi Maharaja Inne, Nirmalayam Sabhakanda Po. Oh, <laughs> 
ഓശം ഷോനെ ബഖലെ Bye. 
coming down from heaven and is placed on this rock. <laughs> beauty. May you rejoice all the days of your life, offering up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. and bless your union. May Christ, the heavenly bridegroom, seal your marriage with a true matrimony. As Christ rejoices in his holy church, may you rejoice in one another. May his right hand of mercy come and rest upon you and protect you from all harm. May the angel of peace dwell with you and protect you from the deceit of the enemy. May God deliver you from jealousy, which brings death. May he make rejoice and remove all sorrows from you. May the blessings which God gave to Noah and his children, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth be upon you. May the blessings which God gave it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be upon you. May the Lord God grant you righteous children that you may rejoice in them. As Abraham rejoiced in Isaac, Isaac in Jacob, and Jacob in Joseph. May the blessings which Isaac gave it to his son Jacob say, God bless you with the dew from heaven and with a very good thing that the earth produces be upon you. 
May the blessings which Jacob gave to his son Joseph say, May the God of your father help you be upon you. May the blessings of those who loved God and pleased him be upon you as well as upon these crowns which have been placed on your heads today by the hands of the priests. May all the people rejoice and give glory for the name of the Lord has been invoked upon you. May God make you abound in prosperity, possessions and blessings. May God absolve your debts and sins as he absolved the sinful woman. May you become heirs of the heavenly kingdom like the thief on the right hand side of our Lord. May all, may all of our faithful departed be forgiven. May the exalted one who descended to Mount Sinai and made the covenant with his bride whom he rescued out of Egypt bless you and this congregation. Let us offer up glory to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit now and always forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Eden Totten the Tone, Nian and Yuva Manavan, Nin Totten and Perka, Vishichi Duga Kulitan. Brothers and sisters. 
sisters, we have a custom which we have received from our holy fathers and venerable ancestors to, to admonish the faithful when we are gathered together in the house of God and to confirm and command you who stand before us to be attentive to virtuous deeds and to be diligent in truth, righteousness and good works. Dear children, pay attention and before the table of life and the throne of our Lord Jesus Christ, before the Holy Cross and the Holy Gospel and before this entire congregation. Realize that you do not stand before one who is ignorant, but before one who knows your hearts. Behold, I now entrust you to one another. <laughs> May God be the witness between you and me that I will not be responsible for anything you may do against his law. May the abundant grace and mercy of the Lord dwell within and rest upon the priests, the deacons, and all the faithful, as well as this bridegroom and bride, along with the guests and the host, through the prayers of Holy Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, and all the saints who loved our Lord and kept his commandments. May the right hand of our Lord Jesus Christ dwell upon you always, forever and ever. Amen. My beloved faithful, realize that these commandments are for you, all of you who have gathered here today. Husbands, learn how your relationship with your wife ought to be. Remember that she has left her people and is now united to you. Therefore, you must please her and be compassionate towards her. Even if you are naked, you must clothe her. Even if you are hungry, you must feed her. Even if you are thirsty, you must provide her drink. Likewise, wives, you must act toward your husband as though he were your own soul. Have the mind to serve him as is fitting in everything. Behave, behave with love and kindness toward him. May the right hand of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us and with you all forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts and sins as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you, Mary, full of grace. Our Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, our Lord Jesus Christ. O Virgin Saint Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at all times, and in the hour of our death. Amen. We believe in one true God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not me, being of one essence with the Father, and by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and became man and was crucified for us in the days of Pontius Pilate and suffered and died and was buried. And on the third day he rose again according to his will and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of his Father and shall come again in his great glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. The life-giving Lord of all who proceeds from the Father and who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who spoke through the prophets and the apostles Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And we confess one baptism for the remission of sins and look for the resurrection of the dead and the new life in the world to come. Amen. The King's gardener stands in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the at your right hand. Leave your people in your Father's house. Hallelujah, you holy, 
To the ages of ages and forevermore, Lord of the faithful world, offer prayer on our behalf to the only begotten that He had mercy on us. So men call us so. sins to you and your faithful departed, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grant that our feeble and unworthy prayers be pleasing and accepted before your exalted throne, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may now be seated. We have concluded the sacrament of holy matrimony of our beloved son and daughter. At this time, the newly wedded couple 
will come forward to the holy altar and they will place their first offertory. We have a custom and tradition that the, bri that the father of the bridegroom will give the offertory to his new daughter and the father of the bride will give the offertory to his new son, which will then be placed as an offering before the Lord. Thereafter, both the bridegroom and the bride will sign the marriage register. And thereafter, one witness from each side of the family will come forth and sign the marriage register. After that, we will have a picture with all of the clergy that are present here with the bride and the bridegroom. And then we will officially announce the newly wedded couple for the very first time. Let me take this opportunity to first thank, especially the chief celebrant, Reverend Father Jerry John Jacob, for celebrating and solemnizing this especially marriage ceremony, and all of the Reverend Fathers and deacons who have gathered here. I know many of them have played a very instrumental role in the life of both Austin and Alina, not only as former parish priests, but as spiritual fathers who have guided them and mentored and instructed them 
and we thank each and every one of you for your presence to all the beloved Korofiskokvoy and Achens, as well as the deacons, seminarians, and to the choir. We thank you and to all the faithful who have come and witnessed this blessed sacrament. May God bless you and reward you 30, 60, and 100 fold. With the permission of all of the clergy who are gathered here this afternoon, along with all of the faithful, especially on behalf of the parish vigar, Father C.G. Thomas, as well as the bride's vigar, Father Jerry John Jacob, and all of the Achens, it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Austin and Alina Cherian as husband and wife. everybody. My name is Jason Joseph, and I'm one of Austin's many, many cousins. On behalf of Austin and Alina's families, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here to celebrate this auspicious and joyous moment with us. We are especially thankful to all the clergy who presided here today to solemnize this blessed sacrament. Just a few quick reminders before we leave. The cocktail hour will begin at 6.30 p.m. at the Weston Gallery in Dallas. The reception will begin at 7.30. Parking is available in the front of the hotel, or my personal recommendation by the American, uh, thank you, the American Girl Center. Um, the prayer books are a church copy and not for taking home. If you could do us a favor and stack them uh, on your way out, we'd appreciate it. We ask the family to stay behind for family photos. As Alina and Austin begin this new chapter of their lives together, 
We ask all of you to continue to keep them in your prayers, and may God grant them many years of wedded bliss. We look forward to continuing the celebrations this evening. Thank you.